मेरी क्यूरी सावित्री भाई फुले मरिया मानसरी एंड देन इरा सिंह लाइक दैट थाउजेंड्स ऑफ एग्जाम्पल्स आर देर वेर वन कैन अचीव ग्रेट थिंग्स थ्रू सेल्फ मोटिवेशन सेल्फ मोटिवेशन सो द जॉब फॉर द टीचर इज टू किंडल सेल्फ मोटिवेशन among the students in order to kindle self motivation among the students first of all the teacher should have the highest degree of self motivation to excel in teaching then she will be able to put in lot of effort she will be able to discover she will be able to implement the appropriate teaching learning strategies to motivate the students and then to see that the students also put in greater effort and the students self motivation is improved so without motivation there is no excellence in teaching learning process so in order to bring home this concept the importance of motivation i have shown so many uh, examples of great people out of arts because of self motivation the condition of being eager to act or work the condition of being eager to learn achieving the goal but not but on the reward however extrinsic motivation also works to some extent to some extent in uh, achieving better grade in the examinations piaz educational psychologist considered to be one of the greatest educational psychologist the best way to motivate a person is through intrinsic motivation self motivation creating interest in the subject then what are the supporting factors to motivation see here now after understanding the importance of motivation concept of motivation then if we see the supporting factors we try to implement if we see opposing factors we try to remove them then naturally the uh, uh, madam are you are you comfortable right okay fine so when we say learner centered practices so now today we have choice based curriculum choice based credit system cbcs that means other than the core subjects we offer a number of electives to the students and then they choose a few among them based on their interest that means they are choosing their own choice right contextual learning to increase the sense of learning and the result is intrinsic motivation for learning bruner another great uh, educational psychologist i think uh, he lived for around 100 years or even more ideally interest in the material to be learned is the best stimulus to learning rather than such external goals as grades or competitive advantages but vygotsky another great educational psychologist he believes that motivation is essentially extrinsic it neither is nothing like intrinsic that means socially when the students meet each other they discuss each other and based on uh, the interest of others also sometimes we get interested in a particular course it is extrinsic motivation and once the student thinks by doing well this course he may get a better grade definitely by reading these books or these questions he gets a better grade definitely that makes him read 
uh, put in more time like that. So, based on the external influences, there is also motivation. And uh, so, it is uh, all that is extrinsic motivation. But there are some students, but the number is less. They learn continuously from day one. They put always challenging questions to the teacher. A few of them always. The teacher always spends sleepless nights by keep remembering them. Oh, these students will may put any question, so I have to prepare to answer their challenging questions like that. They are deep learners, right? intrinsically motivated. Learning is a joyful experience to them. They are deep learners. Always they are deep learners. Vygotsky believed that motivation was mainly extrinsic. So, if you want to define, it is an action that springs from outside influences rather than from own, one's own feelings. What are the opposing factors? Let us discuss. This is most important for that, for us. Supporting factors are definitely choice of the students to choose the courses of their interest, choice of the students with uh, a particular teacher. I want to learn all that supporting factors. But what are the opposing factors? Very, very important in uh, higher education today. Lack of prerequisite knowledge for a given course at that level. Let us say first year, either engineering or science or management or social sciences or whatever, first year. So, how many students do not have the prerequisite knowledge to learn a particular course in a given class of 60? There are many, there are many. So, we start teaching a particular course, assuming that all of them have the prerequisite knowledge. You are explaining beautifully with all examples, with interesting case studies and all that. But the student's point of view, they do not have that required prerequisite knowledge to understand this concept you are discussing. He is not able to understand anything. Then what will happen? First class he does not understand. Second class he does not understand. Then in course of time you have covered the syllabus. Then without understanding anything, just to pass the examination, he will learn certain things at memory level, remember and recall level only, the past three years question papers, etc., etc., etc. Okay. So, this I consider the most important factor opposing motivation. Then what do we do? We do about it. It is not only problem for the student, it is problem for us. We don't enjoy our classes. So, how do we remove this problem? This is the first thing we should address as soon as the students get admitted. There may be several strategies. So, one of the strategies I was advising to many and uh, some of them have implemented and they have come with success story is, in the first week itself, the teacher announces that there is a test based on this syllabus. That syllabus is the prerequisite knowledge, essential concepts, not the descriptions, procedures. Essential concepts, essential principles, if they understand them, they will be able to follow this particular course. I will conduct a, a pre-test in order to plan, my, not to threaten them. Don't threaten anytime. You have a dialogue to see how best I can plan my lectures. 
what is your knowledge based on that foundation i will build my lectures for that purpose if there is any gap i want to fill the gap i want to help you like that you take the students into confidence therefore winning the confidence for their sake you have concern for them for their learning that can be built from the day one not by words by your effective domain effective domain plays a very significant role from the day one itself students are very clever of making judgments evaluating you we evaluate the students but the students also evaluate us every minute they evaluate us therefore then after conducting the test we know how many are not able to having do not have the prerequisite knowledge then in a very clever way not uh, telling that this is uh, not segregating the students etc etc we will have some classes where we revise where we revise the basics we involve the bright students and also slow learners i mean who have that problem in a very clever way no segregation please if we segregate these are slow learners uh, these need remedial classes all that means you are beating on their self efficacy their self efficacy is killed already they do not have they have poor self efficacy very cleverly we have to manage things so then three in a group one bright student one moderate student one do, does not have the uh, the prerequisite knowledge so we activity some what is called some problems or some questions you discuss now in the bench you discuss now so already there is a boy there who can scaffold the others who can help the others unknowingly by that in course of time by that few classes revision classes you are removing the gap of prerequisite knowledge once the students think yes here is the teacher who wants to build the foundation of knowledge among all of us who wants to see that all of us are come to a particular platform where from they can he can build further knowledge then they are all with you you are the facilitator right that means you are taking the help of 30 teacher assistants to help 30 other students right so that is how prerequisite knowledge can be built in the first one or two weeks itself then the students are with you they are willing to learn once you build the prerequisite knowledge and cleverly after you build the prerequisite knowledge cleverly you give some simple questions to those students who do not have who have the problem simple questions they will be able to do them you should think you should strategize in such a way that they are able to do them they are able to find out answers once they think yes i am able to find out answers then what happens their self efficacy is improved yes i can do it yes i can do it he starts believing in himself that is important that is very there are many students especially from sri lanka who are admitted here some of them do not read a particular part of chemistry there they do not have in their syllabus suddenly they come to engineering there is a gap so by organizing separate classes we build the gap very quickly so they think oh it is so easy see this subject can be made a simple there are some teachers who always go to the class this is the very most difficult subject so let me explain to you i have come prepared there is nothing is no subject is more very difficult or easy it is the teacher and students together can make any subject very simple any subject very interesting so 
we have to always from day one teacher and students travel together it is there is no separation maybe only for the purpose of evaluation we evaluate that's all evaluation for the grading not for even assignments for practice when we evaluate and give grade yes we conduct examination systematically and all that till then every minute they are together 